सी नंबर सेवेंटी टू लेवन सिक्सटी टू एंड ए नॉट प्लीज अनम्यूट यू सेल्फ वन से हैव टू से समथिंग टू यू सेवेंटी टू सिक्सटी टू लेवन एंड ए नॉट See these people haven't joined the groups still, admodo groups. Explain yourself why you didn't join till now. Number sixty-two. Om si. A not Srinivas, eleven Gandhi. And seventy-two. Why haven't you joined the Admodo group till now? I'm coming to the Gandhi number eleven. You joined in the A section group, A section Admodo. Even they have been joined in the A section group. You haven't submitted anything, either the quiz or the assignment till now. I'm coming to the seventy-two. You joined. Madam. Yes, you joined as a teacher in the group, Babu. Not as a student. Okay, ma'am. Okay, just okay, change ma your uh, joining as a student. Okay, ma'am. Right. Okay. okay. And uh, coming to the submissions of pending. So I already graded you everything that is quiz and uh, assignment also, and uh, the non-submissions of quiz. I'm reading out the numbers. Who haven't not submitted? Uh, to uh, tomorrow or else on Monday, I will give you the marks of this board. That is a quiz and assignment. I'll post it in the group itself. Okay, you will be referring not in the admodo group. In the class group itself, I'll go. Be, I'll be going to be posting all these things. That is both assignment marks and also the the responding uh, quiz marks. And who haven't not returned till now, and those things also been displayed in your. Class groups. So I'm reading out the numbers here. Quiz hasn't been not uh, answered uh, by five, number eight, eleven, forty, sixty-one, sixty-two, a not, twenty-five, thirty-five, forty-four, fifty-seven, fifty-nine, sixty-four, ninety-three, and ninety-five. See, all these are not been uh, turned in the quiz at all. And coming to the assignment, see it's a thirty-five, fifty-one, ninety-five, number eight, eleven, thirteen, thirty-nine, forty-two, sixty-one, sixty-two, and A not. All these have not been turned in the assignment till now, right? And coming to the uh, version of the eleven, he has not been uh, joined in the proper group at all now till now, and he hasn't been submitted anything. right gandhi yourself you are not in the proper group that is not in your b section group in admodo and you haven't submitted either the assignment or the the responding quiz and all the other numbers who have not been uh, submitted the quiz and assignment had read out all these numbers so i will be giving you uh, the marks either by tomorrow or by the monday itself right and the same thing will be get reported to your uh, corresponding uh, class teachers your uh, counselors and at the same time the specific thing regarding your attendance for the specific mobile computing class and also performance activities uh, progress everything will be get reported to the hod sir so your class teacher will be get reported your counselors will be get reported and the hod also will be get reported regarding all this progress right I already told you many times that your grading system and your uh, performance activities has to be get activated and get reported and graded by each and every time your attendance will be weekly reported to the university but nobody are been getting worried about your attendance everybody are, most of the students are been getting absent for the afternoon classes and you haven't not bothered about your uh, performance activities in the admodo right the same thing will be get reported to your counselors and class teachers and the chodi sir by tomorrow or by monday depending upon my convenience i will do that right 
so that is about the thing that i want to discuss about your assignments and your performance activities and your regularity right and uh, and and persons who haven't not it till joined that is 1162 and a not they has to immediately join the groups until and otherwise i won't spare them and i won't give you any further activities uh, in future right uh, next coming to our session now in the previous class we discussed about the various versions of the tdma and the day before the yesterday's class we discussed about the various versions of uh, uh, sdma and also fdma in which we are going to be dividing the total subscribers in the available space in the space division multiple access and within the fdma you are going to allocating the separate frequency bands for each and every subscriber that they are using in the particular frequency band right with the sdma even though sdma is not going to be occupying any specific multiplexing technique specially which is going to be using the existing techniques when our users are going to be increasing in a specific radio cell or space is going to be occupying by multiple or this is going to be increased by many number of subscribers it couldn't accommodate and it couldn't do that particular uh, multiplexing technique that is cannot accommodate much of number of users with the existing multiple multiplexing techniques that is the sdma and coming to the fdma instead of dividing the space according to the group of users existing in a geographical area all the users who are been willing to call their subscribers will be allocated with a fixed frequency band of channel right so that particular frequency band of channel or the frequency band is been permanently allocated to this particular subscribers and within that particular frequency band itself they are being used whether they are using that particular band throughout the day or throughout 24 hours is not the matter but they will be allocated with that particular fixed frequency band so because of which only few number of subscribers are been allocated with the frequency bands and it is been fixed and no other users are going to be using that particular frequency band right so that that is the disadvantage of using the fdma and to get the refinement of the particular fdr to have overcome the disadvantages we discussed in the previous class about the corresponding tdma that is a time division multiple multiple access so within this time division multiple access when compared to the fdma each and every sender and the user receiver is going to be synchronized based upon a time interval instead of the frequency that is even the frequency band is been uh, fixedly slotted not allocated to the subscribers but the frequency band will be slotted according to that particular frequency band slotted some sort of or some group of subscribers will be allocated or accommodated into that particular frequency band but based upon the timing intervals that is based on a time interval or based on the time slots or time slicing the users are going to using that particular frequency band but not based on the frequency but are based on the time interval so that in one time interval any one set of subscribers are being using the channel then in another time interval another set of subscribers are going to be using the particular channel in that way using the tdma we can accommodate many number of subscribers within the same frequency spectrum that we are going to have so we are going to be using in combination of the fdma and also tdma what we have already discussed in the gsm version while we are being discussing in the gsm part right so in this category of the tdma access we discussed about the fixed tdma in which fixed time slots are being given to the fixed subscribers again the same problem comes with the corresponding fdma isn't it or not so that what happens with this particular fixed tdm again the a, say, a sorry same time slot has to be used by the same subscribers if the user is not willing to use the particular channel in that time interval which has been allocated to him it is going to be or it is remained to be unused and it will not be available for other users who are in need right so that uh, it will not be uh, that much of advantages if the time slot is been fixed and assigned for the specific fixed user right that is the problem that is the problem with the fixed tdm and but uh, the procedure that you are going to follow in uh, this particular fixed tdm is the total available tdm frame is going to be divided into group of channels and here the 12 subscribers are going to be used using this particular channel occupying each and every channel with 417 microseconds already we discussed about this uh, time allocation in the gsm and these 12 channels 
which is going to be reflecting with another 12, that is total 24 channels available in this uh, uh, frequency band of spectrum, will be used by the 12 subscribers. 12 channels exclusively for the downlink frequencies and 12 for the uplink frequencies. Why? Because in the frequency band of spectrum, while using the satellite as a communication, while you are using the base stations and the transponders, the corresponding to and fro communication has to be performed within the existing frequency band itself. So within the frequency band, existing frequency band, both the upcoming and low, I mean, uh, down, uh, down, sorry, down linking and the up, uh, up linking frequencies has to be accommodated within the fixed channel frequency. So that we divided the total channel into the 24 channels, 12 for the up linking and 12 for the down linking. This is how the communication will be performed in between the mobile users and the transponders, which are going to be in turn communicating with the satellite in turn. So that is what we've been discussed. As we done it in the frequency division duplexing in the FDMA, we are also performing the time division duplexing in the TDMA in order to do with, in order to get communicate both with the uplink and downlinking frequencies. So, but as we already discussed as a static allotment of the time channels for the corresponding fixed users, it is going to be low, uh, I mean, uh, losing a lot of bandwidth, right? That is nothing but accommodating not much of users it will be too static and inflexible for the data transmission as only a certain fixed number of users are going to using the channel. Okay, so at that case, in order to avoid the disadvantage of this fixed TDM, we have to implement the demand-oriented TDMA schemes. That is nothing but whenever user requests, he will be get allocated with the time interval. Now, among this particular theory, that is the demand-oriented TDMA schemes, we discussed about the other schemes called as classical aloha, where we will not have any limitation of that is restricting the users of using the corresponding transmission media. They can be using the transmission media at any time. Okay, that is nothing but the classical aloha. They will be just sending their data whenever they want to communicate. But because of this uh, uh, freelancing of communicating the data whenever they want through the corresponding transmission medium, there will be chance of having the collision. Why? Because the particular timing intervals are going to be collided by the particular sender A, B and C. Right? So that collision has to be left for the tra higher transmission layers in the case of classical aloha, where they are going to be uh, requesting the senders for retransmission of the data or recorrection of the data whenever they are going to be missing because of the collision that has been occurred. But they are going to be freely communicating but whenever they are finding that the data has been missing or the data has been got some errors in it they will be requesting their higher layers of communication to request the particular sender to retransmit and correct the corresponding data that is the with the classical aloha and coming to the refinement of the uh, classical aloha which is nothing but a small refinement which is a slotted aloha within which the corresponding channels which are been uh, allocating some time intervals for the users the total transmission period will be divided into time slots, not with the senders, not with the communicators. You are not being slicing the time interval, but the channel is going to be divided with the time slots. And here the synchronization is being made on the side of the senders. Why? How they have been synchronized in the say in the uh, particular sorted aloha is nothing but every sender has to send his data from the starting of the slot itself. That is the actual refinement. That is the normal refinement that is being given to the classical aloha with this particular slotted aloha. So what is that? The data has to be sent at the starting of the slot itself. So in between of the slot, the data shouldn't be sent. That is the communication shouldn't be performed. But even with that, we are not being synchronizing the communication channels. Just you are being synchronizing the senders to send the data at the starting of the slot. So that again, there is a chance of having the collisions like this. That is A and C are having this, sorry, B and C are having the collision at this interval and A and C are having the collision at this time slot, right? Even though they have been following the synchronization from the sender side, they are having the collision in the while uh, they are being transmitted. Right. So, but uh, for light load systems, light load communication systems, and there is no question of a throughput and we may have the chance of having the errors in the data, we can use in that particular systems in the combination of classical aloha and the sorted aloha. Why? Because we are not having the guarantee that users can send the data as usual as to the receivers and there is no chance of having the error and there is no chance of losing the data. So using these qualities, that is the classical aloha and the sorted aloha, you are going to use in the systems where the load is very much low 
that is nothing but transmission load is very low and we are not get, uh, bothering about any throughput and all these things in that case we can use in the combination of classical and spotted aloha but when compared to the classical aloha as you are going to follow the synchronization on the sender side started time intervals of the transmission the throughput of the classical aloha will be the 18 percent that is being increased to the double of it to the 36 percent in the plotted aloha okay and coming to the other mechanism that is the carrier sense multiple access so this is a by one one of the biggest improvement in the carrier sense multiple I mean, what is called as a, our basic aloha okay so what you are doing is already we discussed about this scheme that is a csma that is a carrier sense multiple accessing so before communicating and before sending our signal into the transmission media we are going to sensing a carrier is been existing in the channel already or not so after sensing if the carrier is been existing you are just remaining for a or waiting for a moment and after a certain interval of time once we are been detecting that no carrier is been with the same frequency uh, accessing the data in the transmission medium then only you are enter to enter i mean transmit your data so in that particular csma procedure where you are going to using it using this particular csma procedure in the wireless lands there are different uh, progressive schemes in this particular carrier sense multiple access the first one is the one persistent csma in which the user is going to be sensing the carrier identify that the carrier is busy and remaining idle for a time until the carrier is going to be free and once the carrier is being free then in then only it, it is going to be sending the data in it that is one persistent and next one is non-persistent within this non-persistent the a particular waiting period of the corresponding uh, station by sensing the carrier as a busy one will be randomly selected a random time interval will be allocated for waiting period so after the random time interval has been expired again the station is going to be sensing for the user i mean uh, carrier busyness so once the, again the carrier busy it has to again or it is going to be pausing for a random interval of time after the random interval of time expires again it is going to be sensing that is without any specific uh, uh, proper slot of sensing the carrier and waiting waiting moment it is going to be doing randomly that is the non persistent it will not be identified that whenever the user is going to be i mean the mobile station is going to be sensing the carrier whenever it is going to be waiting for it will not be uh, static it is not going to be fixed in the non persistent csma and coming to the p persistent csma within this, within this p persistent csma what happens is once the user identifies that the carrier is idle it is also going to be identifying that the corresponding uh, slot which is already used using the using that particular carrier station is able to send the data in the next time interval or it will be sending for a long interval of time that is nothing but it will be waiting for a random interval of time in the similar way in the non persistent csma and at the same moment the random time interval of waiting is being checked about the probability of the station already using that particular carrier frequency is able to send the data taking a break into the second slot in a nearby slot or it is going to be taking a long delay in sending the next data by observing that particular delay itself our station will enter into that carrier to send our data that is nothing but giving the chance for many number of uh, stations to transmit to the carrier by sharing the time intervals that is what we discussed in the previous class of this particular flow charts one persistent csma and n persistent or p persistent csma see why are why i am stressing all these uh, communication methodologies again even though it's a revision for the previous class i want to give you the clear picture of what sort of schemes are being happening and we are already know about the csma and gsm mobiles and how they are being accessing how they are being allocating for only the uh, certain group of users uh, only in one version of a standard and how you are being accommodating more number of users in one sort of standard because of following these group of these type of or these variants of modulation and multi-accessing schemes only they are being accommodating multiple number of users why because mobile using is going to be from the years from the decades itself but we are at the position where you are being accommodating multiple number of users into the a particular group of uh, communication that is we are being just uh, evaluated from the 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. What they are doing is they are being multiplexing the multiple number of users and at the same time multiplexing the various type of data transmission also. So 
so how they are been doing how they are been accommodating only the 24 hours of day for that much number of users and also that much number of data transmission not only users are been communicating companies are been communicating companies are been reserving the data and they are been storing the data they are been communicating the data they are been uh, what is called as serving the users from the number of servers worldwide so how this has been happening within the existing time interval of the single day covering 24 hours, right? So this has been happening because of different types of schemes that are been implementing based upon the application they are using. See, for example, only there is a lot of time for us. We can wait for a moment of time until the carrier goes on idle. Then you can transmit the data. Then you, then, then you are going to be following with the one persistent CSMA. But coming to the P persistence in CSMA, there are many number of users. We have to share the same interval of time for the more number of users with the same carrier frequency. Then you are going to implementing the P persistence in CSMA. What happens here is already one user is going to be using the CSMA, I mean, a particular carrier. The, the same carrier is going to be wanting by another two users. If the carrier has been identified as busy by the own user, that is ourselves, say, we are going to be waiting for a random unit of time. But we are going to be checking that whether the same station which is already sending the data, having the probability of sending the data in the next time slot immediately. If not, that is our random time is very less than the corresponding the probability of sending the data by the already using station to send the data in the next slot immediately then you are going to try to transmit the data in that particular empty slot that is the station is not the previous station is not continuously sending the data it is taking a gap between one slot of sending data and another slot of sending data if that particular probability is being matching and it is being very less when compared to i mean it is very greater than when compared to our random waiting time then you are entering into the transmission and we are taking over the carrier and we are sending our data so we are going to be sending the data in that particular time slot and we are coming back so that in the next time slot the previous station is going to be sending the data in it in that way the carrier's time interval is being sliced among the corresponding users likewise the round robin fashion right so how you are being round, uh, implementing the round robin uh, scheduling in the operating system that is nothing but uh, slicing the time interval among all the jobs how you are being scheduling by scheduled i mean scheduled by the corresponding operating system in the similar way the carrier is going to be shared among multiple number of users right so that is nothing but the peep assistant csme and we already discussed about uh, uh, csme cd collision detection Right, in the previous unit. And another thing, uh, another variant of CSMA here it is collision avoidance. That is, once after tra after starting the transmission, if you identify there is a chance of uh, the collision, that is chance of appearing the collision, that is called as detecting the collision. That is the CSMA CD version. That is CSMA with the collision detection feature. But uh, before transmitting the data itself, we are going to identifying that there is a chance of collision. Okay, so CSMA CD is after entering into the transmission of the data, we are going to identify that there is a chance of having the collision in transmission. That is the CSMA CD. But there is a chance of that is avoiding the collision before the transmission, that is the CSMA CA, which is going to be the standard of 802.11, which is going to be discussed as a major part in the second unit. We'll be discussing that is nothing but what it is doing is uh, whenever there is a chance of having the a collision, it is going to be checking out another alternative to uh, send the channel into that particular carrier. That is the station into that particular carrier or user into that particular carrier so that nobody are going to be get collided. That is nothing but a backing scheme will be followed by this particular CSME and CA in order to avoid a collision itself before starting the transferring of data. Right. Right, and coming to this particular another version, which is we are going to be discussing about. Already we discussed that we are in the version in the flow of demand-oriented accessing in TDMA itself. Demand-oriented accessing in TDMA. So this is uh, peculiarly named as the uh, procedure itself. That is demand assigned multiple access. Demand assigned multiple access. Multiple users will be there. Uh, depending upon the demand, the corresponding assignment of the accessing of the users will be given. So channel efficiency for the Aloha will be 
as ordered aloha is 36 but with this d s m a that is d a m a that is dama that is demand assigned a multiple access our efficiency will be in incremented to the 80 percent incremented to the 80 percent so what happens in this d a m a so that from the 36 percent of the slotted aloha we just rapidly increase it to the 80 percent we are also are going to be using the tdma itself but you are going to following some reservation patterns that is reserving the time slots in the transmission period reserving the time slots the transmission period depending upon the scheme the collisions may occur and may also be solved here okay so that is nothing but every user has a chance of reserving the time slots in the future while they are going to be transmitting while they are going to be transmitting they are having the chance of reserving the future slot that is whenever they are enable in position they can able to reserve the future slot also that is nothing but we are increasing the we are increasing the accessing frequency or accessing capability in that way are been increasing the efficiency and at the same time whenever the future slots are being reserved and the reserved slots are being identified by the other carriers i mean other mobile stations they won't enter to transmit the data so that the collisions can also be avoided okay so this is also called as reservations aloha as it has been uh, giving the chance of uh, increasing the corresponding what is called as uh, uh, reservation criteria and transmitting the channels all the things are going to be that is it is going to be using as the reservation aloha as the users can reserve their slots and one more thing we can also say that uh, this is going to be following a peculiar procedure called as pooling pooling of the channels this particular pooling procedure which, which is very similar to the pooling procedure in the operating system what happens uh, in this particular thing is already you know about this particular pooling procedure in the operating system for example a group of users are there right they are in need of a channel to transmit their information particular uh, tdma channels this is a frequency band and this particular frequency band is allocated for this a group of users okay right but all the users are not going to be accommodated by this particular frequency band to use this uh, frequent, I mean, time channels. But uh, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, only six channels are there according to our frequency band drawn here. So that only six users are being allocated for transmitting of the information, right? And six users may not be at the right enable position. Six are being allocated for this, but six are not being completely using the channels. One may be stopped its transmission, right? May, for example, say this second channel has been stopped the transmission. So that even though it has been allocated to the second station, it is not transmitting now, isn't it or not? And a group of users, a group of users are being requesting for a channel to transmit their data. Among this particular area are a group of users. A group of users are being live in process to requesting the access the channel. They are requesting the access of channel. As the second station is not going to be using the particular channel while the transmission is going on, this group of users, from this group of users, one person or one station is being allocated the channel. So that particular person is going to communicating in that particular channel. For example, say according to your previous scheme, that is nothing but probability of sending the data by this second mobile user by identifying that if the probability is very low to send the data in the next mission or the next slot so that the channel is free for a long interval of time so that you are allocating this channel for the other user. So the other user is using that particular channel and again he is going to be coming back after his uses. That is according to the time interval itself, he is going to be given the chance to transfer the data, after transferring the information, he has been coming back again. In that way, this user again will be sent to this group. He will not be, uh, no more he will not be the user of this particular group and this group is will called as the pooling, pool of users. Nothing but who are in need, 
will be identified and dragged into this particular group and they will be allocated to the unused slots and they will be get back after their uses and they will be sent to the normal subscribers. So this is what happens with the corresponding scheme. I think I am clear, right? So what happens? These are all the normal group of users who are being allocated with this frequency band. Already six users have been using the six channels of this frequency band. Uh, that is according to the time slices and uh, some more group of users are there who are in need of this particular channel and identify identified by that particular group of channels which are unused will be allocated to this group of users who are in need after the usage of the channel they will be coming back and again the second user second station user of that particular channel will be the still the owner of that particular channel itself and he is going to be using the channel after the user has been written back to this pool whenever he has been written back he will be sent to this group he is no more the user of request okay in the similar way all these users are being giving request access to this particular channel and this use this particular pool is going to be get served like this this is the mechanism that is been followed by dama okay right so this is the access procedure of this dama that is demand assigned multiple access in that way you are going to uh, accessing or you are getting the 80 percent of efficiency in accessing when compared to the classical and slotted allow right and coming to the another one that is what happens here is aloha that is nothing but a slotted uh, procedure that is simply or freely by users trying to uh, what is called as trying to access the channel first after that they will be having the reserved slot okay they will be having the reserved slots and again they are trying to communicate with each other they are again having the reserved slots that is whenever they are in the on position that is in the enable position of transmission they will they are having the chance of reserving these three slots in future so they can be using the chance of using the slot but here the aloha is going to be transmitting in this way the aloha is going to be transmitting in this way and this particular reservation has been done by these three stations Okay, three stations in this slot, but it is going to be using by some other, that is the aloha is being done by, that is the slot is being uh, initiated by some other station. So which is to be used, which is to be used, sorry, which is to be used by some other, the self itself, that is these slots has to be used by these three stations, which are being occupying by the new station in aloha, where there is a chance of having the collision, even though the collision is being here, only you are being derived with only the what is called as a 80 percent the same thing will be get handed over to the higher uh, layers in order to have the retransmission of the data there is a chance of having the uh, what is called as collision even the collision occurs because of this uh, what is called as pooling procedure that is going to be get carried over by the higher uh, higher uh, level of layers and here it is going to be done in the form of a batch mode as you know already about the batch operating system we are, uh, you can uh, find it in the operating system itself so how it has been accessing the group of jobs in a batch operating system that is a group of jobs will be get executed once the batch releases after the sorry releases after the execution of it then only the other job gets into the scene right so in this way that dama is also going to be following this particular uh, <coughs> processor of group job that is the data traffic and uh, voice traffic will be done in the batch mode okay already you discussed about uh, that is uh, uh, explicit reservation scheme and next one is uh, another procedure that is prma that is uh, packet reservation multiple access packet reservation multiple access here also we are going to be having the implicit reservation scheme implicit reservation scheme by the number of stations within a frame within a frame itself you are going to accessing or you are going to reserving the packets in that case that is in the dama case you are going to reserving the channel here you are reserving the packets in a frame itself you are reserving the packets in a frame so please don't get confused dama is about the channels and prma is about the frames right and here the, the satellite is going to be giving you each and every time the status of the corresponding frame who are being accessing or which channel is going to be accessing that particular frame slot of the packet so that the station is going to be sending a packet in that particular slot once it has been reserved by it it is going to be 
sending the data over until and unless it has been completing its packet transfer in that particular slot of the frame, no other station is going to be allowed to send the data. Right? This is what happens with the PRMA. This is how. So within the first frame, within the first frame, that is with the eight channels that we already have, the GSMA frame is having the eight carrier channels, right? So eight frames are being there. Uh, all these frames are going to be reserved by these uh, stations. All these frames, all these frames are reserved by the stations. A, C, D, A, B, A, F. That is, three pack, three frames are being, three slots are being reserved by A, and the second one is by C, third one is by D, and fifth one by B, and eighth one by F. Whereas seven is being remained empty. Seven is being remained by empty. So that this particular allotment of the frame for all these stations will be get identified and it will be same reflected to all the required stations by the satellite. That is each and every time the status of the frame will be get reflected to all the stations which are in need. So based on the availability of the free slots itself, all the other stations which are in need will be competing for the station, will be competing for the station. In this example, that is, the status will be looking like this A C B A B A F. That is, only this slot is being free at that moment. So for this slot, all the other station will be trying to get compete to get that slot to send their packet over the channel. Okay. So in this case, in our example, this seventh frame. Krishna sir, I'm Ramya Krishna sir. Hello, Ramya Krishna. Ramakrishna, is there any problem? Okay, so this particular seventh channel or the seventh slot is going to be accessed, trying to access by many number of stations. So as many number of stations are been competing, even though many number of stations are been competing for the same channel, for the same channel, F has been succeeded in getting that particular slot. F has been succeeded in that particular slot. So whenever the channels who are being competing with that, for example, if F is already been assigned that particular channel, but some stations are going to be trying to get attempt for that particular channel, there comes the collision. F has been remind and it has been allocated that particular assignment, but here the two cha the channel which is going to be competing for the seventh slot has been get collided why because it is already been allocated to the f okay so that other than f other channels are also going to be other stations are going to be trying for seventh slot but it has been succeeded by f whereas it has been collided by this particular station which is in the slot of d right see in the next frame c has been stopped its transmission d also been stopped its transmission and trying for f a is being uh, released in this particular frame. So at this particular stage, it is being the satellite is, satellite is being transmitting the status of the frame as A triple dash and B A F D. That is nothing but these three slots are being free now. So D has been started the transmission in this eighth slot. In that way, the frame is being allocated with or the total frames are being reserved by the stations and they are going to be competing to get the free slots depending upon the status reflected by the satellite from time to time and according to the free time slots available in that particular frame number of stations are competing to get that particular time slot okay this is about the packet reservation scheme okay so that is what we have been uh, done here but uh, the thing is even the collisions been occur while doing this uh, in the similar way as in the Dhamma, here the stations which have got the slot, free slot in the particular request, they can have the chance of using that particular slot for the future uh, uh, timings also, until and unless they will be completing and releasing the slot. So until they release the slot, they will have the chance of using that particular uh, slot. 
they will be reserving from time to time. Uh, if they want to use the slot for the next time interval also, they will be using that particular uh, slot for the next time interval. So until their completion, until that particular station completes its data transfer, they will be reserving that particular slot continuously. That is about the PRM, right? I think I'm running out of time. And coming to this reservation TDMA. So after reservation TDMA, we'll be getting with the other thing that is a collision avoidance. Avoiding the hidden and the terminals. And we'll be discussing that particular topic in the next class. Right. I think reservation TDMA can also be explained in the next class. See if anybody are having any doubts regarding your submission of the quiz and assignment or regarding the topic that we have discussed here. I just discussed only the two topics here today. That is about the DA, uh, DAMA, that is DMA and uh, also the PRMA. Right. So as I've been uh, stressed on the revision topics, that is the review topics of the previous class, uh, because many of the topics has been discussed in the uh, last class so that I have to, uh, want to give a clear picture of it. That's why I took much of the time for the review itself. Only two topics have been discussed in this uh, uh, class. Anybody are having any doubts regarding the topics that we discussed until now? Accessing who's that using the help of the Mac? You can ask now. I can clear you. Otherwise, if there are any doubts regarding the previous topics and all those things. And one more thing. I'll be posting you the second part of the uh, PPT of the first unit. And the material is already there. And I'm going to give you the another uh, assignment for you. Right. So if any doubts are being regarding any assignment submission or the quiz submission, I'll clear you now. Anything are there? Any doubts are there for you? Any doubts are there? Anybody? Okay. So with the reservation TDMA, I'll end you. I'll take a two minutes for completing this one. So please, uh, uh, please uh, remind our patient so that I'll complete the reservation TDMA. See here, within this reservation TDMA, when compared to the PRMA and the DAMA, uh, a fixed number of slots will be given to the fixed number of uh, requesting stations. Fixed number of uh, slots will be given for reservation for a fixed number of uh, requesting stations. You see here, n mini slots are being given, n into k data slots, whereas n is equal to 6 and k is equal to 2. Nothing but uh, n mini slots followed by n into k data slots form a frame that is repeated. Each station is allotted its own mini slot and can use it to reserve up to k data slots. That is nothing but how many number of slots that we want to have in reserve. How many number of slots that you want to have in reserve that can be identified by K, whereas how many number of data that we want to set uh, sent in this particular present interval will be given by N is equal to 6. That is, a particular station N, that is reservation for data slot. These are the reservation for data slots. Other station can use free data slots based on a round robin scheme. So already I discussed about in this particular uh, reservation round robin in the DAMA case and within the previous scheme. In the DAMA, how you are going to be uh, following the round robin scheme in order to share in, well, sharing the data interval among all those things. Here also, the slots are being allocated for the data to send over. These are all the six slots that are being allocated for sending the data. And each slot will be given with two data slots. That is each station or each frame will be given with the two data slots. And before sending this information with n in number, with k data slots, with n in number, with k data slots, each and every station, each and every station will be first preserving those number of mini slots. That is, if you want to send five data information or five uh, slots as an information, then you are going to preserving that number of mini slots before prior transmission of the data. So, though whether you are being able to send the five info, five data slots in your time of assignment or not, we are going to be in in priorly or in uh, in reservation or in advance itself. You are going to be reserving that much number of mini slots. 
so th these mini slots are been owned by you that is n number in mini slots are been owned by you and you are been trying to send the data in k in number that is each and every slot is going to carry two data parts okay two data parts are going to be sent in each and every slot if you are not using that particular slot that particular slots can be used by some other users who are in need okay in that way you can send the data for the other stations also that is been sharing the data slots by other stations along with you and at the same time you are having the more chance to use the number of slots that are already been reserved by you this is about the reservation tdm right but the number will be confined confirmed and confined depending upon the availability of the time slots right so this is the reservation tdm where you are going to have a chance of reserving certain number of mini slots before the transmission of the data once you start the data we can decide that how many number of data slots can be allocated for each and every slot and if there are any unused slots by you in that particular time interval those can be reserved and can be used by other stations also in that way you can give the access for other stations right so this is the one which is going to be giving you the best traffic management when compared to the other schemes that is nothing but we are having the more chance to use that particular slots if not they can be used by other thing that is maximum bandwidth will be maintained and fixed delays will be there as you are been using and it can be giving the chance for sharing the sharing by the other users okay that is about the reservation tdm and we will be discussing with other topics so after uh, inhibit the sensing and the polling and all those things will be entering into the uh, after four or five talks we are entering into the ieee 802.1 that is the second part of the second unit right i am ending the session here